Welcome to MyEyeAcademy.com. I'm Professor Mahfouz Sen from Pakistan. This is video VPL 1.4. Please do subscribe to the channel to see more videos. In this video, we'll talk about the parameters of the coordinate topography. Remember, the parameters are to understand the values on the printouts. The actual interpretation guides are VPL 1.6 and 1.9. 1.6 is the detailed seven-step interpretation guide, and 1.9 is a quick 15-point guide. These are the printouts from the four different machines, and I will pick just the values from one of the printout, and I'll magnify it. Look at that. It has got some parameters on the left-hand side and then the parameters on the maps. So first we'll do the left-hand side ones. Right here, in the top left corner, there are three things, these circles and two values over here. First of all, these circles the red one is the steep axis and it is presented by the red and this is actually the K2 which is the steep axis. Then you have got a QS value. QS value is actually quality specification. If it tells you OK, that means the printout is OK and there's no problem with that. And these are the signs which want you to repeat the test like the, some of the data is missing and patient is blinking too much and you need to fix the test. So you need to repeat the test to get the message OK. And that we call quality specification. Q value is one of the indices and it's explained in the lecture indices of topography. But just briefly, I will tell you that it measures the overall shape of the cornea and the normal value is up to minus 0.26. Anything more than minus 0.26, like minus 0.50 or 70 or up to 1, it is hyperprolate and it is suspicious. If it comes in the plus, that means the cornea shape is oblate, that is not a normal shape, and that usually happens after the laser. Then there are some parameters in the top right hand corner and these are k1 is the flat k k2 is the steep k km or k average it is important for measuring the size of the flap in the lasik less than 40 is the risk for the free flap and more than 46 is risk for the buttonhole in the flap k max it is important it is not actually here it is right down, but I've included it because it's one of the K values. It is an important parameter for the follow-up of the keratoconus and important for the follow-up of the post-LASIK progression. SIM-K or conventional keratometry is not included nowadays. Its simulated keratometry is determined as an average keratometry in the central 3 mm of the cornea. Nowadays, in the topographic printout, you have got K1, K2 and K max. Let's see them one by one. K1. K1 is the flat K. It's the power of the flat meridian of the anterior surface. It is presented in blue and it is determined by using the central 3 millimeter ring. I've made a mnemonic over here that the K1 is the flat K. Let's go to the K2. K2 is denoted in the red and it is the steep K. It is at 90 degree to the K1 and it should be less than 47.2. Anything more than 47.2 is considered as suspicious. Next is the KM, which is the mean or average K. And this is the mean power of the anterior surface, which means it's the average of K1 and K2. As I explained before, less than 40 is risk of the free flap, and more than 46 
is the risk of buttonhole in the flap. And next is the K max, which is the maximum curvature of the cornea or the anterior surface of the cornea. But normally, it is less than 47.2. If the value is more than 47.2, that's very highly suspicious of the keratoconus. X and Y coordinates show the position of the K max as compared to Pecky Apex. Then there are some values on the left hand side. This is RF, RS, and RM. These are the radii corresponding with the K1, K2, KM. We normally don't need them, and we usually use the K1, K2, and KM in the optic form. Right, this value over here is the axis of the flat meridian, which means the axis of the K1. It is also presented here in the black, so this one should correspond to this. Like over here, it is roughly 169, and it is 169.5 here as well, so this is the flat axis. Meridian, this is the meridian that needs no cylindrical power to correct the astigmatism. Then this value is actually the astigmatism topographic astigmatism of the anterior surface, and this is the difference between the K1 and K2. Remember, it should be compared with the manifest astigmatism. Like here, the astigmatism is minus 1.4, so your astigmatism in the glasses should be comparable to it. The causes of more than usual difference are misalignment, long angle kappa, corneal irregularities, heart spot syndrome, tear film abnormalities, lens-induced astigmatism, and corneal opacity. So these conditions may skew the value and you may not have the astigmatism here matching with the actual astigmatism of the patient. Remember, six diopter of astigmatism is suspicious for keratoconus and anything less than six diopter is considered normal, and after the sixth diopter, it becomes very suspicious. RPR is the average radius of curvature between the six millimeter and nine millimeter zone. Usually, we don't take them in the indices and calculations. Then is the R minimum. This is the smallest radius of curvature in the entire field and it may be elevated in keratoconus, but it is not included in the calculations. Let's go to the next set of parameters. This is the same parameters now from the back of the cornea, same K1, K2, KM, astigmatism, astigmatism of the flat meridian, and R minimum and RPR. So it, these are the same values. Remember here, again, there's astigmatism. If this is six diopter or more, it's again suspicious. So six diopter astigmatism on the anterior or posterior surface is suspicious for a keratoconus. Let's go to the third set. In the third set, there are four values. The plus is for the pachymetry at the pupil center. The plus doesn't represent the center of the pupil. It is actually the pachymetry at the pupil center. The white circle is pachymetry at the pachy apex. And black circle is the pachy at the thinnest location. And this cross rectangular is K max on the front surface. So let's see them one by one. I've deliberately gone to the second one, which is the thickness at the apex of the cornea. The reason for that is the origin of the coordinate starts from here. Like the, here, the value of x is 0 and the value of y is 0 because the coordinates start from here and you measure the other values as comparison to the pachy ap apex. So this is the geometrical center of the cornea and x and y coordinates are always 0 as they start from here. Let's go to the pupil center. This is the cordial thickness at the center of the pupil. Coordinates of the pupil center 
The only important thing here is X coordinate, which represents the angle kappa or the skewed cornea or the misalignment. Remember the normal value is roughly less than 200 micron and this is necessary to evaluate the angle kappa. This is a really important slide and we need to look for the two things. One is the thickness of the thinnest location and second is the Y coordinate of the thinnest location. Let's see them one by one. First is the thickness of the thinnest location. If this is less than 470 micron, that is very suspicious. And then you need to compare the thinnest location of the right and left eyes, and that will be explained in the guides. The second thing you need to look for the location of the thinnest location or the Y coordinate of the thinnest location, which actually tells you the downward displacement of the thinnest location in relation to the pecky apex. Remember, the pecky apex Pix is taken as a geometrical center and all the coordinates start from here. So Y coordinate means how much vertically the thinnest location is displaced as compared to the pecky apex. So if this is the pecky apex in the center, then this tells you that in this patient it's a minus 0.35. So the displacement of the thinnest location is downwards in the y coordinate direction. If the value comes plus, that means the thinnest location is up as compared to the pecky apex. If the thinnest location is on the sides of the pecky apex, then the x will be plus in this direction and minus in this direction. So that's why that's how the coordinates are calculated anything less than minus 0.5 which means the downward displacement of the thinnest location up to minus 0.5 is considered normal between minus 0.5 and 1 is considered suspicious and anything more than minus 1 is considered highly suspicious of keratoconus then comes the final set of the parameters which are mainly about the anterior chamber parameters it tells you the pupil size, KPD, and lens thickness. I'll talk about the KPD. KPD is the keratomatic deviation power. It represents the effect of the back surface of the cornea on the true net power. The normal value at any point should be less than plus 0.75. So it tells you how much the posterior surface of the cornea is affecting the total dioptic power and it may be an early sign of posterior keratoconus. Remember, the keratoconus starts as a posterior keratoconus, so if the KPD is high, that may be the first sign of posterior keratoconus or the first sign of keratoconus. Then the last is the cornea volume, anterior chamber volume, angle, and anterior chamber depth. These are important in the glaucoma and will be considered in the VPL 1.2. 12, which is a screening lecture. Now we have done the left hand parameters. So now we are going to shift to the right hand parameters and the four maps and let's see them one by one. These maps are the curvature maps, elevation maps, and pachymetry maps as we have already discussed them. So let's take them one by one. These are the four maps, and first of all, we'll take the axial or sagittal map. This is axial or sagittal map that we described as SAP maps, S for sagittal and A for axial. OD means it's a right eye. This is the nasal side. This is the temporal side, and we have taken a nine millimeter view in this printout. Then the red is the hot color, yellow is up to 44 diopter, green is 42 diopter and blue is 36 diopter. So this area which is blue is roughly 36 diopter values. The yellow one is 44, around the 44 plus minus and the green words are 
plus minus 42. So this is how it is represented in colors. Then K2 is the steep and K1 is the flat axis. And then this circle, which is the pupil marking on the topography map. So this was all about the axial or sagittal map. And sorry, I forgot. There's another circle here, which is the five millimeter circle. And that circle is important. Why it is important? Because when we will do the interpretation of the topography map, we'll compare the top and bottom or superior and inferior values. And those values are at the five millimeter circle like here, the superior thickness over superiorly, it is 44 diopter and inferiorly, it is 43.7 diopter. And it is important for the interpretation of the topography map. So this five millimeter circle is important. So we have done the sagittal or axial map. And now we'll go to the elevation map, which is actually a posterior elevation map. This is telling us that it is the elevation map of the back or the posterior elevation map. And this circle tells you that this is in comparison to best fit sphere and not in comparison to the best fit toric ellipsoid. And this is explained in lecture VPL 1.1. Then this arrow tells you the direction of the steep axis. And the plus sign is the pupil center. And the black circle is the thinnest location. And these values, the plus 10, plus 5, this means how much it is elevated as compared to the best fit sphere. So we have done with the posterior elevation and now we'll do the anterior elevation. It again tell you it is the anterior elevation map in comparison to the best fit sphere and these plus values and minus values tell you the elevation or the protrusion of the cornea in comparison to the best fit sphere. So the plus is elevation and the minus is depression. And if the value comes zero, which is not in this printout, that means it's exactly at the same place where it should be in the best fit sphere. We have done and now we are going to the pachymetry map, which is the final one. In the pachymetry map, you have got a white circle, which is again a five millimeter circle. It's important as it was in the sagittal map. Because when you compare the superior and inferior thicknesses that you always do at the five millimeter circle, like here, the thickness is 627 micron, while the thickness inferiorly is 620 micron, and you compare these two with each other for the interpretation of the topography or for the interpretation of the topography map. Again, the tennis location and the pupil center. Thank you very much for being with me, and do subscribe to the channel to see more videos. Thank you.